Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So today we're going to, going to have a conversation. I'm not going to put on a show. You know, sometimes this, 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 I've never put on a show, but sometimes this thing does, right? It just, it just gets so animated and it does this, and it's pretty funny and all that. And I like that. But that's not the way I feel today. And I'm not going to pretend it's the way I feel. But I'm delighted to be here and I'm delighted to be with you. So it's not like it's drudgery. It's just not quite as hilarious as it might be. There's Willie. Willie thinks it might be hilarious. He's starting to get things going in the background. But what we have is the twin pillars of awakening. You just pretty much got to have them in in order to wake up and, and, and then have some sort of sustained awakening, even if it comes and goes, even if that awakening comes and goes. But to have that even uh, is probably going to require uh, something that most of us are not very good at. And I was certainly not very good at either one of them. And that's honesty and humility. Now, I think I've made it clear that I was a rascal in my former life, and I did a lot of a lot of things that were not good, and stealing was one of them. Uh, and I, I did, I gave up stealing a long time before I woke up, so it's not, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, but it's the honesty that I'm talking about is self-honesty. Are you willing to be honest with yourself? Are you willing to tell yourself the truth? about your own identity because you sort of already know it but you're in denial and my job is not to wake people up so to speak it looks like it and sometimes it feels like it i talk about it like it is but the truth is is that my job is to go around the world and to talk to Awakeness and encourage awakeness to wake up through a given unit that the awakeness is picked out, not me. How do I know? Because it, it it already called me. When I say go around the world, I mean with Zoom. I, I don't actually travel. It's would it would be just an inefficient use of my time. I can reach. I do one of these. I can reach thousands of people. And um, so. Honesty, being willing to tell ourselves the truth, not only about our identity, identity, but to tell ourselves the truth that we don't know a damn thing about awakening. You don't know anything about awakening until you wake up. You think you know. I mean, I felt like I was pretty much an authority on it. And then I woke up and I realized eh, I just really didn't know much of anything. I hear Jack's got a squeak toy, so it's a good thing this isn't an act. It's a good thing we're just talking. So the other pillar, other than this self-honesty, is humility. And this is really a big, big, uh, a lot to ask of you. I understand that. It was an impossible ask for me. I mean, it just I was so arrogant. I, you know, you can... You, you're not blind. You can see there's still arrogance here now. Um, there's still uh, haughtiness, you know, all of that. But it just doesn't mean anything anymore. It doesn't, it's not, it's just what the unit does. You know, it doesn't phase me. And I don't think it, you know, does much of, uh, I don't think it phases you much either. You go, well, there's, there's Fred going off again, right? There's Fred Ness. There's the Fred Ness pattern. There's a pattern here of arrogance. There is no justification for it whatsoever. But it always was arrogant, except for when it was what? Except for when it was nobody. Nothing. No, nobody at all. Just um, I once heard a woman in AA uh, describe this situation of, of this vacillation between arrogance and impotence. And she said that my name is Sue, and I, and I am the little brown turd around which the world revolves. And that's kind of and that's kind of the way it is. Is that um, we we think nothing of ourselves, 
until we think too much of ourselves. There is um, something called getting yourself right-sized, and that's a recovery term. But it's a good term for all of us to understand, which means is to find out, uh, real, get, a, get, a, get a sort of a decent assessment of ourselves. And the, there's an assessment here. I realize that there is arrogance and, and vanity, but that the awakeness, those things are not taken seriously here. And, uh, and they have not stopped awakeness from choosing to use this, choosing, but well, who knows, just language, choosing to use this unit as a tool of awakening others, right? And, and it does. I mean, awakening can't be as difficult as they make it out, or I couldn't simply, could not have made a living waking people up for the last 12 years, which is exactly what's happened. So, and it's not, I mean, I don't, I don't just wake people up, but, you know, we have lots of other stuff after that. But no, I didn't at the beginning. The only thing I have is awakening. That's all, that's as far as I had gotten. I didn't know anything about post-awakening because I'd just gotten there myself. And I had actually been in post-awakening for several years before I began to teach formally on the internet. But uh, it was it was it was five years between awakening and the time I, I uh, started teaching on the internet. We, there's not much of that today. Pretty much now, somebody wakes up and they turn to their neighbor and they start teaching. And this is okay, except for when it's not. And it's, you know, if that's the way you're moved, you've got no choice. You can't do anything else. But if the, if you feel like there is some sort of a choice, then wait until perhaps you have matured a little bit because we think we know everything. I did when I woke up. I just thought I knew it. I, mean, I got it. Okay. Uh, here's, here's me. And I used to, used to really think that it was the big three were Buddha, Eckhart Tolle, and me. <laughs> We were the charm for holding up clarity in the world. <laughs> and uh, talk about arrogance, huh? So, and arrogance came right out right after my awakening. The first, the first words out of, my, out of my head, I don't think they came out of my mouth, but the first words out of my head when I woke up were, wow, nobody's ever gotten here. Buddha didn't get here at this high place that I was, so to speak. That's the way it felt. And because it was an arrogant unit, it just blew that thing up, right? But humility is what's going to keep, if you do wake up and there's not uh, humility on board and honesty. But right now we're talking about humility. If there's not humility over there, it cannot sustain. It can't. You can. You can never abide as a whiteness in the absence of humility. I see it all the time. I really do, and um, and I see it with my students, right? I just do. I mean, my, my the close people to me. I I see it in them. I don't necessarily remark on it because of very often because it's just a it's just a fight I don't want to go through again, right? There, uh, the problem with once we've woken up, and um, particularly as we get a little bit more advanced, or even when we first wake up and we think we're advanced, what we forget to do is we forget to, to self-apply our own teachings. And if you don't self-apply your own teachings, then you may be teaching others wonderful things, but you ain't getting it yourself. You're not, and that's going to fall in the way, get in the way of you teaching some people. You know, some people you can help along anyway, but uh, most people are going to, they're going to be keyed on what's coming through you, not just necessarily out your mouth, but what's coming through you. There's a certain presence. It's not my presence. It's a whiteness's presence. I, I, there's no Fred Davis over here to brag about having a presence or to brag about waking people up or to, you know, brag about having a beautiful wife. It's, um, there's just no Fred Davis. There's an appearance of a Fred Davis. And because the YouTube channel is 
you know, the Fred Davis channel. We assume this is Fred Davis, but we assume incorrectly if we do assume that. This is a whiteness in a Fred suit. And it's only a Fred suit because we called it Fred. And the only reason you call me Fred Davis is that I've trained you to do so. See, you didn't know what I was when you first saw me or first saw me on YouTube or whatever. And like, boom, I'm Fred Davis. So for now, now I, the people all over the place are trained to call this unit uh, Fred Davis. But it's not true. So the humility that is required, the honesty is required, it, that's required is self-honesty. And the humility that's required is the humility to be honest with yourself. See, those two just kind of do like this. And this is, this, is, this is really the critical underpinning of awakening. And it's what stops people from awakening is the lack of these two things. It stops them from awakening to begin with. And those who have just an you know just a gift from God out of the blue, they wake up anyway. The, and you will there will be the presence of the both of these things usually when somebody first wakes up, but gradually they'll overcome that and they'll move right back into an egoic frame of mind. But they won't think they're in an egoic frame of mind. They'll believe that they're they're in an awakened state at all times, but they're getting petty all over again. See, like, uh, and, and, and let me self-report that last week um, there were a couple of times when with, I got where I was uh, self-absorbed and I was neither, uh, and I was just wasn't honest with myself. And uh, so, <clears throat> and also wasn't humble because I got tired of having this illness that I've had for three years. And... Uh, and I started to grumble a little bit about it. So I didn't tell myself the truth because the whiteness does, is not diseased. It's just its unit. And, uh, and the unit's healing. So, you know, who knows what, what's coming. But things are better now than they were a year ago. I guarantee you that. And, but I had just reached a point where I was just tired of being in pain. I was tired of being restricted. I was tired of walking funny. I was, you know, uh, instead of being grateful for being able to walk at all, which I couldn't do uh, four months ago then or three months ago and I couldn't walk at all so instead of being grateful for that I was just grumbling about the fact that I was um, that I was restricted in, in some things in pretty much everything <laughs> you know you may not notice but you actually use your body in a lot of things and the body is very reliant on the spine so I started grumbling and Betsy called me on it and she said, I wish you would just say something positive. And when she said that, I was just stunned. I really was I just, Oh my God. I just stopped right there and just, Oh my God. I saw and, and I, and all of a sudden I was not in the dream anymore. So there was some, there was difficulty with identity right there went through this and I've been teaching for 12 years and I've been, it was been uh, since 2006 that my awakening. So you would think I would get it by now. And I do. And I have it, so to speak. Except for when I don't, I never have it because there's nobody here to have it. And there's really nothing to have. It's just, again, we're just back to the screwy language. But <clears throat> I'm just saying the words that come out and then I'll go around and clean them up <laughs> as we go. So, because I didn't stay alert to my own condition, uh, I had to go through the sure process of waking up, which is I had to suffer. Because I was suffering prior to Betsy calling me on it. And then I had to suffer the embarrassment of being, you know, <clears throat> Mr. Non-Dual Guru and... Uh, and, and, and just a, a, you know, a regular schmuck to my wife. <laughs> See, I'm not supposed to be a schmuck. I'm, that, that's what we hear. And I don't really think I'm supposed to be a schmuck either, but I noticed that schmuckness arises, right? And there's not much I can do about it, uh, except for when I can. And in this instance, Betsy calling me on it, just it woke me up immediately. And I went, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I said, I'm so sorry. I mean, I, I, I see exactly what I've been doing. 
And uh, it was just I was unconscious, you know, and I, I just was identified. And I'm very, very sorry. And I didn't even know. Well, I did know it could happen to that degree, but I, but I, but it's, nonetheless, it's always surprising <laughs> because I'm not better than anybody else. <clears throat> and the the one thing we all know in post awakening is that we ought to be clearer than this, don't we? Hmm? No matter how clear we are, we're brilliantly clear, but we ought to be clear, clearer than this. And even when you know it's not so, as in this case, it uh, there's still a, you know a, an arrogant surprise that this unit, that, that, that awakeness would fall asleep through this unit, even if it was brief. Not supposed to. <clears throat> They're not supposed to. So that right there, you're back in the dream. So I'm only using that just for and to make the point. Because I, you know, was I not supposed to be in that way? Well, we can check by, by asking the big question. Was I? Yeah. Yeah, I was. So was I not supposed to be? Uh, there's really no argument for that. Plenty of argument for the fact that I was supposed to um, take a little break from clarity in order to help instill that most difficult of things for me, which is self-honesty and humility. See, the humility part comes from telling ourselves who we really are, allowing that to come through. The honesty is being honest enough to tell ourselves who we really are, but if there's not humility, even no, no matter no matter how much will there is to wake up, it just won't happen. I see it. I see it in people uh, regularly. I mean, I'm not talking about anything that's like somebody over there just did one time in 1965 or something like that. Uh, -uh. I'm talking about this here now. And I'm talking about pretty much everybody else in non-duality here now, too. And that's. I'm just calling a spade a spade. I'm not trying to put anybody down. Certainly not trying to put this down, but I'm self-confessing. So um, I'm, I'm willing to be honest about the, the, uh, the clarity and the lack of the clarity here because nobody's got perfect clarity. I don't have perfect clarity. I mean, there is, there's, you can't have perfect clarity. There is perfect clarity, but you are that. You don't have it. You are that. You are pure awakeness itself. That's what you are. And you don't like to tell yourself that because if you tell yourself that <clears throat> and you accept that, then suddenly the unit that you've had all your money bet on, all your time and money and attention and everything else for your whole life has been spent on how to make this thing more mighty, more powerful, <clears throat> more admired, um, uh, better looking, richer, faster, all of those things that I'm not. Um, taller. I was, you know, I grew up in a tall family and I just left me on the side of the road, right? I'm five nine. And in a in a in a family full of six foot pluses. So and that didn't do a lot for my self esteem either. And that's probably where that arrogance started. Because that's where most arrogance comes from. It's just through a lack of, of, of genuine, authentic self-esteem. And what self-esteem means really is just being right-sized. I understand that um, that that this unit, like even in the non-dual circle, that I uh, understand that this unit is uh, clearer than many. And um, and I just assume I'm not as clear as some others, like. Well, no reason to give examples, but I just think there's people that have been awake longer than I have, and um, I have the humility to, to respect that, because it doesn't mean that they are <clears throat> clearer, but it does mean they've had a longer opportunity to become clearer. There's something to be said for time. Just like in recovery, my sponsor just told me, you know, Fred, time's the only measurement that we have here. So if somebody's been sober 20 years, even if they're a dick, they must have been doing something right. And we need to find out the right part of what they were doing and ignore the rest. 
so that we can self-apply the right part. Humility is saying that there's no Fred Davis. It's seeing that there's no Fred Davis and then being willing to accept it. The honesty is being just coming down off our high horses, off our very powerful and beautiful units that we're just so crazy about these things. We're just, oh man, we're head over heels with them, aren't we? I mean, and we do. I mean, I, tell you, I treat this one special. I don't think. I don't. I mean, I, I took a shower today and I did my hair. But I mean, not that I like did my hair. I just combed my hair. But, but you know, I put a little product in there. And, um, you know, I put on clothes that go together. Why? You know, does it matter? No. But there's a vanity there. And there's and it's really no point in not doing that either. So I've got no point to prove either way. But the honesty is being willing to see that there's no Fred Davis. And there isn't. There's no Bob or Carol or Sue or Tom or whatever you are, whatever your name is, <clears throat> whatever it is that you go by, whatever it is that you train others to call you, that you're not that. The, the name of a thing is not the same thing as the thing itself. And I go over this fact again and again, but you know, an apple doesn't tell you, the word apple doesn't tell you a thing about a red, round, juicy fruit with a sort of a firm exterior and a nice, crunchy, uh, delicious mouthfeel uh, for, on, on the interior and a core and seeds and, you know, a little thing at the top stem and uh it really doesn't describe it i mean if i just tell somebody you would you like an apple and they've never seen an apple and they've never been told this is an apple they won't know what i'm going to bring them they would have no idea so the word apple is once they've seen an apple and i say this is what an apple is then they'll proceed to see an apple and that's exactly what i've done here is i've trained you to call me fred davis why because you've got to call me something I've been called Fred Davis for a long time. I have nothing against that name. I'm not. I'm not crazy about it. I could tell you I didn't like my name uh, for a lot of years. And uh, but one, why arrogance? I just noticed that this guy is not in where he's supposed to be. Now he's much better. <laughs> How's that for OCD? Huh? The um, but. The honesty of seeing, being of really just seeing, being being open to seeing. So that honesty, there's the honesty gives you a certain willingness, and the it's the willingness to come to see the truth. I mean, you, if you go through an awakening session with me and you don't wake up, it is almost like you're trying not to. And I'm not, I, 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 I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, because. Once it's pointed out to you, once the truth is pointed out to you, you can see it's pretty obvious, most people. And they'll just lay right down. But some don't. This is a very good process that I have developed here, that has been developed for me, and I was given. I didn't develop it, not the first time. It just came. But... It's not a perfect process because sometimes people will go through it and they won't see it. And sometimes people will go through it, they'll see it, and then in the next thing, in the next sentence, they show, they, they you know, they, like, oh, no, you're right, there's no bend. And in the next moment, they say, well, you know, I think I've got pretty much got this, says Ben. So, see, you're right back to being the character, to believing that you are the character. There's no character. But that's the identity. the identity that you take. You call this thing Ben, right? And um, Ben has certain characteristics, and Ben has this and that. And one of the one of Ben's chief characteristics is a lack of humility, because once Ben has woken up, Ben can see that he pretty much did it, and that there's nothing to it, and that Ben doesn't need to do anything, uh, or be certainly doesn't need a teacher. Uh, why would a, why would a Ben need a teacher? There's um, because 
Ben can get this thing back himself. Says Ben. <laughs> but you can't. You, 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 it doesn't mean it can't happen. It certainly happens. But nobody does awakening. I don't do awakening. I have to confess to you that it feels sometimes like I can wake somebody up against their will. But it's not true. Only thing, I, I can't wake anybody up uh, unless I've got full cooperation. Or not full, but I've got a good bit of cooperation. Um, and by that, I mean that a diminished uh, a diminished lying, a liar who's diminished now, and uh, and, a, a di and and where you're not dead set on keeping your identity. Because what we all wanted to do, let's just tell ourselves the truth, is that what I was looking for was an enlightened Fred. That's what I expected was to get and have be an enlightened Fred. I couldn't wait till I was an enlightened Fred. I just knew it would just blow everybody's socks off. And then Fred would be seen to be the kind of guy, you know, that everybody respects and loves and gives money, <laughs> sleeps with, all that stuff. God, you know, you can't hardly get ego out of this thing. As soon as you think you have, you have, you know, the, the, then you're back in the, you're back in the ego because it's just so difficult. It's all about right now. See, it's not about what you saw last week or last year. It's about right now. Do you know your true identity? And I don't mean just know it, because you can't just know your true identity like I know that, that this unit is actually God or something. That's an intellectual aspect, and it's a good thing to have. We don't want to run down intellectual uh, activity here at all. It's very helpful in awakening. It really is. But you can't know it, you can't show it, you can only be it. You can only be a whiteness. And I've just noticed that we are 27 minutes into this video and I've done pretty well. I've done pretty well, but this is a whiteness. And the whiteness says I've done pretty well keeping Fredness out of here. And I sleep, slipped in here or there, I'm sure but I pretty much kept Fred at bay so that I could get this message to you without a Fred, because it, without honesty, that, I, that there's no Fred. And the humility to accept that, it's the, you have to have the honesty to see it. And then you have to have the humility in order for it to hang around. And who is it that has to have the humility the unit has to come to see that there's no Fred, and that alone is the humility, is the acceptance of what's been seen. Because sometimes I can see in an awakening session, for instance, that I, somebody wakes up and, it's, and, it, and, it, and we laugh and everything like that, and then the next thing out of their mouth is diluted, right? Um, wow, how do I keep this? That's a character question. You can't keep awakeness. You are awakeness. You can't keep it. You can't lose it. You are it. And when I say you are it, I'm speaking only to awakeness because there's nothing else. And uh, uh, it's, awakeness is in a, a Bob suit or you know, a Ben suit or a Carol suit or whatever it is, a Betsy suit. Uh, awakeness is also in a, in a Willie and Jack suit, but then, you know, they're not, they're not nearly so haughty. I mean, Willie knows he's the king of the world, but, uh, you know, but he doesn't make life miserable for everybody else while he's enjoying being king of the world. Dogs are just much more reasonable than human beings are. Whatever your name is, if you think you are that body, this body doesn't have the capacity to wake up. It will not happen. I talk about, sometimes I talk about waking down into the body. And what that means is just allowing the body to be overtaken. Allowing the body to be embodied. We talk about embodiment, but the body can't do that. Only awakeness can do that. And when we wake down into the body, we become much more reasonable people than we do when we're just up here. 
just intellectually got it or you know even got it with you know an awakening or two but uh there's more to it than that folks and if you don't think so you're just fooling yourself and i didn't think so i was fooling myself and i remember very 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 well the first time i heard i just say i was ajashanti great teacher and i was watching him and uh he said, yeah, you know, it takes about five years to really get this thing. And I had been awake about, you know, a, a month or two. <laughs> I was like, oh, bullshit. He doesn't know that. That's not true. He doesn't understand the exceptional Fred Davis. But the longer I stayed with it, the began to, I began to see how much I didn't know. And then along about five years. Actually, I think it was it was about four years here. So I was a, a quick study. At about um, three or four years in, I began to teach locally. But I didn't just come out right out of the gate and start teaching. That's just not on all. It really isn't. You need to have that uh, humility checked. You need to have somebody who will tell you, look, you're just too full of yourself. And that's hurting your progress. I do that with people. They don't like it. <laughs> I don't blame them. I didn't like it when I had to tell myself that either. But I had to tell myself that because I didn't have anybody else to tell me. So what I had to do was I had to just go bloody my nose, bumping into this and bumping into that. And going up every blind alley before I could find a path that was true. Before a path that was true found me is the truth of it. Before I became willing to truly, really and truly not be a Fred Davis, right? Just where I could accept the fact that there never was, well, there's not one here and there never was one. Because we're so afraid of losing that invention of ours. We're so afraid of because people just think, you know, oh, what if I wake up? What will happen then? I'm going to, you know, I lose myself, which means I'm going to lose, my, you know, I'm going to lose my wife and my kids will go hungry and my business will go defunct. And who's going to drive and who's going to grocery shop and all this? And all those things will happen and, and, and they'll happen very smoothly and, and in good order. Because you're not giving up your free will when you wake up. You're recognizing that you never had any because there's no you there to have or don't have, not have free will. There's just no you there. And as the grasp of that moves from um, the suspicion of that um, to the living of that, to the conviction of that, the life situation will, will change. Um, and if you're supposed to be a non-dual teacher, don't worry. People will show at your door. You don't have to go out recruiting. And you won't believe that I say that. But I mean, I mean you won't believe that's true. But it, I didn't believe it was true. But it, and I can't know that it is true for everybody. But it was true for me. And I didn't think it would be. When it, when it was right, I guess you know uh, the first person I got was I got a phone call and. I'd like you to be my spiritual teacher. Would you be willing to do that? And of course, the ego was hot. Damn. <laughs> I've got somebody else fooled into thinking that there's some clarity here. That's great. wonder how many people I can fool with that. But it won the night. There was some clarity here. And when there's clarity here, it's going to come out. And that comes the same thing with you. And the unskillfulness that's present in your life right now is still going to be some of that. This thing is still unskillful. Not like it used to be. <laughs> see, bad as I am, you should you, you should see where I came from. You don't know. But um, but some do. I've had my best friend has known me for 47 years, and he's seen me all over the map. But he knows where I came from. And I guarantee you that this stuns him. Because there's just no getting used to it. Not for me, not for him, not for Betsy. I think I've about done it. Honesty, humility. 
the twin pillars of the gateless gate that you want so badly to walk through. I promise you, you, you if you were just watching this video, then you, your odds are, are, are turning for you. That's the truth. Not just any non-dual video, but this particular video. And, and, and these teachings, the living method of spirituality. We got all thing, kinds of things that'll help you. That Sunday is satsang online, so you can come from anywhere in the world at 2 o'clock Eastern every Sunday. You can get a subscription. It's not expensive. It really isn't. And uh, I paid as much as I charge now on a subscription. I paid that much when I was poor as a rat, and it was, it was almost 20 years ago. Been a little inflation since then. So it's not that. It's cheap. There's also, we have programs. The group clarity session, which is where um, you get together with a small group and we have a small dynamic and I come to the group a couple of times a month and we have like a satsang sort of, except for the fact that it's with a small group of us and we're all clearing. We're all clearing. But this thing's still clearing. Don't think it's it, that it doesn't think it needs to clear. I mean, I, I noticed that it, that every time that it gets a little clearer than it should have been, than it should have happened. I have some people in something called CSP. I don't really push it anymore because I'm trying to do move toward these uh, small groups. But there's a continuing students program which I had for years and still still have still have a few people in it. I'm kind of dying by. Uh, attrition, but um, where I meet people one on one, I talk. You know, we have a talk for an hour every every month, and then uh, you come to Sot Song and everything. But Sot Song is where you start. Just come to Sot Song. I mean, if you if you write, um, let me get you her email. Just a second, and. You write Louise, you can write just Louise <clears throat> at awakeningclaritynow.com. Write Louise at awakeningclaritynow.com. You tell her you saw this video and that you would like to attend the next thought song at no charge. You do that and um, that'd be great. I'll get to um, I'll get to see you. I'm trying to find where... <laughs> I'm trying to find the damn camera again now. The uh, and I just can't seem to find it. I'm not, not, not there. I did it on. I'm doing this a little bit differently. I'm doing this online straight through uh, Vimeo. So I'm not gonna look for the camera. The uh, I don't need the camera. You've got the. You know. You. I know. I'm being recorded. That's all that matters. Thank you for coming today, and thanks for hearing me out and putting up with all this. But this will help you if you let it. Um, this 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 program has helped. This this teaching has helped thousands of people. Has helped many 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 hundreds, not not ten hundreds, not twenty hundreds. I mean, I don't know how many people, but it's it's. But I know it's actually helped that I'm that a couple of thousand people have woken up talking to me. That I know. I mean, it might not have been one on one. It might have been in uh, people wake up in satsang. People wake up uh, in um, the clarity sessions. People wake up in CSP. People wake up uh, the way that they wake up. Not to mention, yet you know, if you just read the books, a lot of people wake up from the books. But you know, if you wake up from the books, do yourself a favor and then come to satsang. Because waking up is not graduation. It's the, it's the commencement, it's the beginning of your adventure in post-awakening. But your adventure in post-awakening will be damn short if you don't follow up on it. I will guarantee you that. I can't guarantee it for you because there are exceptions to that. I just don't know them. But I, I, the, but I hear that there are exceptions, and I'm not saying there aren't because I don't know everything, much as I would like to. At any rate. 
it's been great. It's been great being here with you. I thank you so much. Now, how am I going to cut this thing off without there's, wait a minute, that looks like that might be. I don't know how I'm going to cut this off without the, without knowing where the camera is. I guess I could stop Vimeo. That's what I will do. 